Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about the, the C15 roadmap, uh, the uh, releases we currently have active our, and our plans for the future. We're also going to go over uh, the content uh, plan of record for race 19 that just went uh, generally, generally available on the uh, 11th of December, and then our plans for uh, release 20 uh, next year. Next slide, please. And you can move to the next slide. Yeah, currently uh, you see the, the releases here. Uh, we currently have release 17 and release 18 active releases that have been in the field uh, one year, two year. And as I mentioned, we just released uh, release 19. Um, release 17 will be going inactive at the end of this month, and there'll be a notice uh, going out uh, next week advising you to, to upgrade to release 18 or 19. Uh, we also have plans for release 20 in uh, Q4 of next year, and we're also looking and doing planning for release 21 in, in Q4 of uh, 2024. Um, we will continue to add releases as we go through time, and we do uh, have a commitment to the C15, and our plan is to con continue each year in fourth quarter uh, putting out a new load. Uh, if you have Ribbon Care, Ribbon Care provides technical assistance, emergency recovery, and patches for active loads. And if you're on a retired load, you get technical assistance and emergency recovery, but no patches. So, you know, we recommend that you do get to um, an active load, and probably the best plan is to go to the, the most active load. So, uh, next slide, please. This is our plan of record for release 19. In release 19, which I mentioned that just went to GA in November, we've got block call announcement, E-164 SIP headers, reserve 911 trunks, park retrieval call-in ID, uh, SIP message weighted indicator enhancement, uh, stir shaken attestation, alarm enable, and also ribbon analytics interop was done on this load. Um, so the next slide, please. The first one to talk about is block call announcement. Uh, receipt, receipt of a SIP 607 or 68 will cause the C15 to either play a block call announcement if received at the originating office or tandem this back to the preceding office. The block call announcement is a new AP Max announcement, message number 454. Next slide, please. Uh, the next one is E164 SIP headers. And OCAP bit is added, OCAP 55, to enable sending SIP headers in national E164 format. If the associated SIP trunk group has invite plus equals yes, if this OCAP is no, the SIP headers are not changed. Next slide, please. Reserved 911 trunks. This feature enables a pool of reserved uh, 911 trunks to be defined. This is configurable in OMMP configuration, promptly sync with CP, prompt ESBR. This pool of trunks will be removed from the existing office-wide VoIP trunks and used just for VoIP ESB calls. A VoIP ESB call will be one which encounters a SIP trunk group with ESB equal to yes. If a reserved ESB trunk is not available, a trunk will be taken from the office-wide VoIP trunk pool and message provided indicating this. Next slide, please. Park retrieval call in ID. Uh, if we have an incoming call to a SIP line that has been parked, when you retrieve that call, the display on the SIP line will be updated with the call in ID of the call being retrieved if call in ID is available. Uh, this will apply to parked, direct call park, and orbital call park. Uh, 44 September 2020 features and services described in 297-3102-105, copyright 2010-21 Ruben Communications, um, operating company, uh, confidential property, proprietary all rights reserved. This only applies to calls incoming to the park SIP line. Calls originating from the SIP line, which are parked, will not have an updated display upon retrieval. Next slide, please. SIP message weighting indicator, uh, MWI enhancement. 
Uh, the SIP message weighting indicator enhancement, enhancement provides the SIP voice message header in the SIP MWI notify message. The header includes count of new and old, uh, new urgent slash old urgent messages. The C15 only stores whether the MWI is on or off. Storing the message count values from the voicemail system would require significant memory. Therefore, the values are only held long enough to send the notify to the SIP endpoint. The maximum value for each count is 127, so you can track 127 calls. If the VMS provides a larger number, the value will remain at 127. MWI is updated after a system reloaded net at a new successful SIP register and at a few other times. Because the values are not stored, the values will be 100 or 00 if the message weighting indicator is on. These values will update the next time the VMS provides an update. There are C15 sites that do not use VMS that will provide the SIP notify when a voice message header or have SIP endpoints that have an issue with the voice message header. Therefore, only CNF config capability OCAP 56 is used to enable the voice message header. Next slide, please. Uh, stir shaken attestation ATST alarm enable. Um, the stir shaken attestation alarm has been enabled. This alarm is output daily at 1300 when the software release the default attestation table and the config VoIP ATST configurable attestation table do not contain the same values. The default alarm is a bug major uh, for alarm 140, alarm 41, alarm 142, and 143. And RTS can modify the alarm level to minimum or minor or none. If the alarm level for daily is set to none, there is an alarm reminder at 1300 on the first Tuesday of each month. RTS can also modify the monthly alarm level to minor or none. The purpose of this alarm is for RTS to be informed of a site need to change any asset station value to determine where the software release default value should be modified or whether there is a need to modify how the attestation value is being determined. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, currently our C15 R20 release that we're working on, uh, our plan of intent. And here again, we look to go GA with that in Q4 of 2023. Next slide, please. We currently have uh, two items, uh, the attestation override. This feature provides uh, the customer the ability to set attestation for a trunk group. The customer will be able to perform DMO and GUI changes. And this is the feature in 19 I just talked about that we've implemented where RTS can make these changes. But in release 20, we're gonna give that capability to the customer. And then we're currently looking at enhancements to OMP program trunk group. Uh, trunk uh, query trunk group short. So um, we're continuing to build on this plan of intent. And if uh, there are things that you would like to see added into the release 20 plan of intent and to become part of the plan of record, you know, please contact me. My uh, email address is at the end of this presentation and I would be, you know, willing to, to look at anything you would be interested in and see if we can provide that for you in release 20. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I'll turn it back to Richard. Thank you, Vadi, appreciate it. Um, my name is Richard Travis. I am a product manager for application server G5 and have been overseeing um, a solution that we've created as kind of a transition um, for future opportunities called Voice Sync. Um, as we've looked at the future of you know voice communications with the network they are very broadband driven um, as you look at the, the 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 infrastructure bills coming out of congress you look at a lot of the fundings the drivers the bill the customer demand stuff like that everything's being driven to broadband so how does voice fit into that right so your c15 is going to continue for the you know foreseeable future as far as an infrastructure to to kind of bridge that gap as a hybrid soft switch um, but as you look at older architectures, maybe DMS 10s, DMS 100s, stuff like that, that may be deployed, um, this solution here is what can be 
positioned in that to provide you a broadband based solution to provide voice services. Um, more flexibility, le more hardware, less software, or sorry, less soft, less hardware, more software. I'll get it right more. Uh, one of the, so everything's being virtualized, everything's going to cloud. So it's a matter of how do you define what to, what cloud is for you? Is it a private cloud, is it a public cloud, stuff like that. But having that flexibility within your operations to you know define what your deployment looks like. Maybe you want to consume it as a subscription-based model versus a, an, a perpetual. Maybe the funding sources that you're getting, whether it's government grants, whatever it might be, might dictate that you get you know perpetual funding in order to buy assets and, and stuff like that and capitalize it. But there's also models that we offer that will operationalize it in order to allow you flexibility in how you deploy things. Um, the key focus is here is we don't want to, you know, you don't want to lose control. Right. How can you provide value add and not just be the delivery of a flat pipe, right? Applications deliver more value, more income, and voice is one of those assets that can be leveraged within this space. <clears throat> so with Voice Sync, um, you know, we're really taking a set of components that are highly deployed within, you know, ribbon customer networks, to, you know, worldwide today, and bringing them together in a solution set that is optimized from an implementation perspective, optimized from a solution set perspective to kind of go in as a single solution set. Um, so there's not variables, not a lot of variables that you guys have to worry about and, and, and contend with as far as how do you do this or, or that, right? We're trying to kind of standardize that and simplify so you guys can do things out of the box. Um, so building on those proven elements, proving, you know, allowing us to deliver in a software only model where you provide the hardware allows us to go in and come in at a very cost effective model and comes in a very simple model where we can stand things up very quickly and get you going and moving forward. So what's included in the quote unquote box? Um, you know, we don't provide the hardware, right? That is something that you would provide. Um, everything's virtualized from a software perspective, but we are providing a solution set that, you know, includes our element management system for overall you know, management of the PSXs and SPCs. We are providing a, a routing engine that will allow you to continue to integrate with some of those legacy environments and stuff like that and provide a, you know, LNP, all those various functions that you're dictated to, to deliver. A SIP control, call control mechanism that provides all the core feature services that you need today to provide, you know, whether it's residential services or business services, all of that is included from it from the uh, from the application server. And then, of course, call security, the ability to integrate with new new environments like Stir Shaken, and all that stuff comes in from the SPC, the Session Border Controller, allows you not only secure access from your access interfaces, whether it's be you know IP phones, ONTs, gateways, et cetera, et cetera, also to peer into IP networks from a trunking perspective. So you can have multiple carrier interfaces and stuff like that. And as I mentioned, you know, we offer this solution um, as both a CapEx model and an OpEx model. So we're able to, to uh, adjust to the environments that you need from a funding and, and, and resources perspective. Maybe you want to start transitioning to an OpEx model so you can kind of scale the, the infrastructure to, to your business needs versus having a, a CapEx model, which is kind of a fixed asset that, you know, has, is kind of a, a, you know, it is this size. And if you want, want more growth, you got to go fund it and, and, and kind of get those services. We've also got a series of options that we are that are outside of the solution, whether it be gateways. Um, we've also got some new signaling components coming into the solution as well that give you some additional flexibility from a network perspective. And because we are all standards based, you know, working with standard ONTs, standard gateways, SIP, standard PBXs, I am, you know, this this is all proven and interrupt and, and stuff like that. So you can have faith that when you go into these networks and you need to interoperate and evolve to SIP, that all that interoperability is kind of taken care of and, and proven within the within the infrastructure. <clears throat> from a residential services perspective, right? You've got you know commitments that you've made from your previous service, you know, products that you provided within the networks. So really, we're trying to get you. Um, the core values that you need in order to provide the services that are critical to, you know, your tariff type services. So whether it's be, you know, simple dialing code, speed dial, 
functions that you know people have programmed into their phones and you you want to kind of maintain that service to call call screening capabilities private you know uh, private name and number displays all the call waiting capabilities teen services uh, voicemail services we do have a voicemail service included in this product um, it's not, you know, the, the super duper, you know, text to speech to text and stuff like that. But from a residential perspective, it can do everything that you need from a voicemail as well as emailing, email notification of, of voicemails that have come in. So all the core functionalities that you need from a residential services perspective are included. Now, from a rich serv from a business services perspective, um, the solution set offers all of the key services that you would see in, say, a standard based key system. So if you're looking like a, you know, a call comes in and you answer it in the back and you need to take it up front or if it's in the front and you need to go into the back, right? You can put it on hold and pick it up. So all those bridge line, shared line capabilities, the ability to do hunting and um, call pickups and paging, stuff like that are all included within this system. Um, as an option, we do have conferencing and collaboration capabilities that we can add on to the system. And then we also have the ability to add on contact center capabilities as well. So from a from a full business class capabilities, we've got a rich set of features and services included within the system. <clears throat> from a voicemail systems perspective, um, of course, we got the standard message waiting notifications and stuff like that. You can have multiple greetings, whether it's private, you know, a, a friend's greeting, a, a public greeting, um, I'm away greeting type stuff like that. So you can have like five different greetings within the system that allow you to kind of flexibly uh, handle, you know, various um, callers, um, you have standard play, delete, saves, whatnot like that. And then the ability also to get your voicemail and email form. You can get just voicemail notification in email, or you can actually send the WAV file from into an email and, and actually, you know, listen to it on your PC. Um, there is integration from an Outlook perspective, so depending on the clients used, to where notification back into the system to, you know, I've, hey, I've, I've listened to the message in my email, it can notify back through a read, you know, read response into the uh, voicemail system to turn off the MWI light. So, as I mentioned, there are a few options. Um, we talked about the contact center, we talked about um, uh, Skills-based routing capabilities that we can add on as an option. Uh, receptionist, you know, attendant console capabilities that can be added on. Call control. All of these functionalities can be enabled for as an option within the system. We've got personalized call control, so we can do this either through um, a telephony interface, or we also have a, a user interface, a web-based user interface that is, you know, can be used on desktop, mobile devices, whatever it might be, to where I can set up my my sim simultaneous rings, I can set up sequential rings, I can set up time of day routing, stuff like that. So all that personalized call routing is included with the system. Um, soft clients and then Teams integration from those soft clients is an option that can be added onto the system. So um, all of that is is flexible within the environment. So as we talked about some of the components of, of the VoiceSync solution, um, we've got the you know the policy centralized policy and routing in the PSX that allows us to do the interface from an identity hub, local number portability, CNAM stuff like that. It also allows us to bring together environments that are you know whether you're, you're, you're C15, T7000, C20, DMS100, DMS10. All of those environments can be brought together from a uh, number portability and routing perspective. Um, also, it fully integrates from that perspective with uh, Microsoft Metaswitch and Cisco Broadsoft and others from a routing and call control environment. It's used in a lot of places to kind of simplify and consolidate routing in a multi-platform environment. Enables the long-term migration. So as you execute, um, you can have that central point of management and operations in order to kind of control things in the PSX versus having to go touch three, four, five different systems in order to make a move or make a change within the environment. So the idea of that is to kind of leave the, the, the last, you know, leave the legacy environment there and kind of use that as a central routing engine to kind of transform over time. Um, the session border controller, as I mentioned earlier, it's about, con you know, security. Um, that is, it's kind of, um, kind of the bread and butter of the solution. But now as you kind of come into, you know, security, it now kind of does controls, it does a back-to-back -back user agent function. So now it can act as a normalization from a SIP 
perspective to kind of take care of any abnormalities that come from other environments and allow you to kind of bring that into an environment and, and make it easier to support and easier to interoperate. Of course, it's a network demarcation point. So now as I do troubleshooting, as I do, you know, security and audits and, and stuff like that, you know, I, I've got kind of that firewall, that voice firewall sitting at the edge of my network. Now, as I want to do troubleshooting or I want to do anal, anal, an analysis of data, I want to capture information, right? The SBC becomes a very strong point of, of interface in order to get the various pieces of information that you need. Session control, security, and encryption are all included within the environment. Um, top end encryption capabilities that are, you know, meet those toughest standards of the US DOD. So um, all of this is, is uh, supported with, with top level encryption and security policies. Um, with its integration with the policy router, the PSX, it is able to do in policy enforcement. So as calls come in, it can kind of dip into the PSX, get kind of guidance and in, in routing information, and then, you know, make appropriate, you know, uh, routing points decision the PSX will make the routing decision and SBC will handle it and route it to the appropriate place. The Ribbon SBC also has a, a strong billing uh, interface. So that is where we use uh, you know, everything together from a common CDR perspective and, and allows it to kind of feed out into your billing environments. And then, as I mentioned previously, we've used this solution set SBC, you know, worldwide from a, you know, whether it's tier one, tier two, three, tier three enterprise, US DOD networks, stuff like that, you know, globally. So this is all broadband focused. So this is a pure SIP solution and it ideally fits into a broadband environment. So as you're looking at, you know, your your networks of, of ONTs or, you know, the telephony gateway, stuff like that, this fits in perfectly within those environments. And then it's extensible. So as you look at other options, maybe you've got some legacy infrastructure out there supported through a DMS 10 or a DMS 100, right? You can look at some of those uh, legacy gateways that we offer as well, you know, the, the Ribbon G5 and stuff like that, that can allow you to bring those legacy environments, those TDM lines into this, into this network. The AS-based solution has been deployed, you know, for decades um, with all leading last mile vendors. So whether you're talking to large tier one carriers down to small remote carriers internationally, domestically, um, we provide those services, our very rich capabilities, you know, worldwide. The idea is to make this solution set very powerful, very scalable um, from a capabilities perspective. Maybe you don't need a lot of lines, but you, you know, you wanna have the ability to flex within the environment to, to grow to new revenue opportunities and stuff like that. This solution set is intended to do exactly that. Um, as you possibly want to collaborate with maybe some of your peers in networks, and maybe you want to kind of pool resources and bring together networks and saying, hey, I, I can use this asset and we can kind of team together as a cooperative and provide telephony services across multiple areas, right? This has the flexibility to, to kind of do that. Um, you know, when you're ready, you know, some of the, you know, as we go into these networks, it's, it's not necessarily a forklift. You don't have to just rip out everything. Your C15 is operating great today. You know, your DMS 10s are operating today, your DMS 100s, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but as you look at evolving those networks, right, this allows you to kind of stick a, a, a kind of a beachhead into the network and allows you to evolve over time as needs dictate, as equipment fails, stuff like that, right? Instead of going find out in the, in the, in the gray market, you know, hey, I need to find these pieces and parts and whatnot like that for legacy systems. This allows you to kind of saying, okay, let's migrate these services over here and we'll kind of let that system kind of retire, you know, as it, as it kind of um, ages out. And then of course, you know, all of this is all over broadband infrastructure. So as you look at your optical environments and stuff like that, you know, Ribbon has a, a very large um, presence from an optical solutions perspective with some of our recent acquisitions and we're able to evolve and integrate into those environments very cleanly. The idea from a, from a deployment perspective is we try to keep things very, very simple. So as I've been kind of mentioning going through this, we offer, you know, we, we don't, we're not gonna piecemeal you, right? The idea is when you, when you purchase a voice sync solution, you're really only worried about ports, subscribers, stuff like that. So the way we offer this is we, we basically, all the services are on, all the capabilities you need are on. And then as you look at uh, growth, right, you're just gonna grow in 100, 100 
subscriber increments. And behind that will come any, any scale that you need from the SBCs and, and the PSXs to kind of support that scale. Um, we're not, like I said, we're not gonna nickel dime, right? There are add-on options like contact centers and, and you know soft clients and stuff like that. So not, not all deployments need those. So we've kind of left those as, as, as kind of a, a, an a la carte menu on the side. But as you're looking at, hey, I need hunt groups, I need, um, you know, voicemail, I need various features like that, right? We've tried to include that in the, in the base, and then we scale that as you grow. Now, if there are, you know, one of the things we do during the kind of the pre-sales process is we try to get an understanding of your existing environment. And maybe you're doing some things that kind of fit with outside of our models. Um, so we might need to come in and say, hey, maybe we need to add a few more hunt groups or UCD groups or something like that up front, right? That's some of the discovery that we'll want to work with you on as we kind of go into this in order to avoid, you know, any hiccups and whatnot like that in the process. Um, but we have made a number of, of educated model sets that saying, hey, you got X number of subscribers, so you're going to have this next number of groups, and they're going to kind of scale in a, in a uh, reasonable fashion. But you know, a, as you look at your options, you know maybe extra growth in some areas is necessary. We have those flexibilities and those, those capabilities. We do, so currently we, we offer this as kind of a cap and grow solution set. So we, we deploy this into the network next to your existing system. Um, if you wanna do kind of a migration of, of capabilities from your existing systems over to your new systems, we do to offer those services. Those are not included as part of our base services. So just some things to be aware of as you look and plan for the future. Um, and then from a switch replacements perspective, you know, we, we definitely have a series of, of gateways and other capabilities that can be added into the solution set if you wanted to kind of achieve some of those uh, replacement functions. So why ribbon? Well, you've trusted the C15, the DMS 10s, the DMS 100s for years to kind of operate your networks and stuff like that from a voice perspective. Um, Ribbon is absolutely fully committed to doing that and we focused on delivering you a, a service set that is you know, second to none. So we've been focused on this market set, right? Elizabeth's got a very strong team from a pre-sales perspective. Behind her has been set up support teams and, and deployment teams that, that kind of parallel those environments and have, have knowledge of your, your, your solution sets. So we're absolutely focused on this market set, whether it's pre-sales, post-sales, you know, po and support. So the fact that we've got end-to-end, -end, you know, focus on this marketplace and, you know, resources dedicated to this, right? That that's kind of, you know, we're not we're not dismantling that. All of that's staying in place. We're just kind of transitioning them as technology transitions to kind of take up these these new solution sets and new new offerings. And as I mentioned, we offer an end-to-end -end solution set. So not only security and call control and and you know uh, the routing capabilities, but then you have op additional capabilities to integrate with things like Stir Shaken from a robocalling perspective in order to to kind of prevent your your users from being beat up by, you know, false calls and stuff like that to, you know, analytics and stuff like that as well that, that come into play. We're deploying this as a software only model. Um, so you don't have to buy a ton of hardware for anybody. You're not tied to a single vendor, so you can port that around. So if, it, you know, if you're saying, hey, I've got Dell today, I want to go to HP tomorrow or, you know, somebody else later, right? You can just kind of plop that software around and kind of uh, migrate it. And this allows you to control your own destiny. So as you look at evolving your networks, um, you know, do you trust the cloud service provider to kind of take all that ownership for you? And then you're just kind of reselling their, their services and you're kind of wed to them. So if they do something, you're kind of stuck with it, right? As they increase their prices, you kind of have to ride along with it. Maybe you have to eat the costs or whatever. This allows you to control your own destiny from a costs, infrastructure, services perspective. So now you can kind of say, hey, what do I want to do? What do I want to, what meets my business needs? Stuff like that. And really the focus is on making you guys successful. With that, so I've, I might have rambled a little bit faster than I intended, so my apologies for that. Um, I guess I'll open it up for any questions or feedback. I don't know if there's any chat items that I missed or. Yeah, th thanks, uh, thanks, Richard. Yeah, we have a couple uh, that came through, so um, we can run through a few of those here. Um, the first one uh, does does voice sync or is the voice sync solution set up to support stir shaking? 
It is set up to support stir shaking. It is an option that can be added on to the solution set. Um, at this point, I might bring in Jamie Gibson. He's more of an, a subject matter expert in stir shaking, but absolutely, it is extensible to to support stir shaking. Yeah, I think you covered it, Richard. Okay. I didn't know if there was more color you had there, so thank you, sir. Um, the next one come through, uh, I believe uh, Dale asked this question. So does the C15 GUI get updated with each release? Uh, yes, it does. Great, okay. That was you, Vadi? Yes, okay. Um, and then um, let's see, we also have, how does this scale? How small and uh, up to how large? I think this is so, a reference to voice sync, yeah. Yeah, so so as I mentioned, out of the box, we are a thousand ports. Um, you know, sessions and, and transactions are all kind of mapped in there. And then you can scale at a hundred subscribers at a time. So I hope that helps. Um, like I said, th there are some other items that kind of play into that. So there are group services that are independently extensible, but we try to scale them in a linear fashion with the number of subscribers that you have. So if there's something non-linear from a group's perspective, that can be scaled, you know, separately. But we try to scale group subscribers and groups in a, in, a, in a very linear fashion. So I hope that makes some sense. Hey, Richard, I think they also want to know how large um, was in the question too. Okay, how so currently, um, it's, it's this is more of a market marketing limitation that we've imposed just from a solution services perspective, but currently it goes from 1,000 to 10,000. Technically, there is nothing limiting us to go beyond 10,000. The infrastructure we're implementing um, can actually scale, I believe, to 10,000 sessions on the SBC. We can scale to 50,000 subscribers on the AS. And I'll have to get the PSX, but the transactions there are much, much higher. So from a scale perspective, um, we can go much higher within this solution set, but we've imposed some artificial barriers or artificial boundaries, um, non-technical, um, just to kind of optimize services and stuff like that around it. So I hope that helps. If you have some needs for something larger than 10,000 subscribers, please talk to Elizabeth's team. And, you know, we can kind of um, look at options and strategies on how to kind of get you beyond that, that top end barrier. I hope that makes Great. sense. Thanks everyone for that one. Um, can you tell us more about how to share assets across multiple companies? Yeah, so so the architecture is built um, for multi-tenancy. Basically, you can can create um, again. I'm going to use the word tenant, but basically create isolated customer groups. If I use old terminology. So you can have, you know, company A is set up as their own root domain and they can access the system and they can do all the management within that environment only impacting that core root, um, that core customer group or domain as I call them. Um, and then you can have up to 100,000 of those within a system. So the way we architect it is kind of to create these silos that allow you to kind of create a customer and then you can, architect the system so an administrator only has visibility to that tenant or that silo. And then you can have multiple silos within the environment. Of course, you'll have to have a top level administrator, right, that kind of manages those um, that's shared, but uh, the system is fully capable of supporting multiple, ten multiple tenants, multiple customers, multiple pro service providers within the same environment. Is okay. Thanks, Richard. Um, next one here I see is uh, the SBC. A question about the SBC. Um, so, is the SBC that's included? Is it a fully integrated SBC? Not sure what I think the meaning of fully integrated from a solution set. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, however, you know, if I were to look at it, the SBC is the same one that we sell independent to other customers and other environments. Because if we go into a Metaswitch environment or a Broadsoft environment, right, this is going to be the same SBC that, that will exist there that will exist in, in the voice sync solution. But what we've done from a services and implementation perspective, it's all an integrated solution. So end to end, you know, things flow and are set up to be optimized. So as a, you know, an access line comes in, right, it's gonna be 
customized or, or optimized to interface with the application server in its way of talking SIP, right? The SBC is going to be integrating with the PSX and the AS with the PSX and all that's going to be optimized for this solution set. So can it be separated out? Yes, it can, but from a solution set, no, it's fully integrated. Great. Um, got two more here, I believe. Um, I have a T7000 today. Uh, do you have history with the T7000 uh, to voice sync? We do. Um, I'll probably ask Elizabeth or Jamie to provide a little more color, but yes. Yeah, I mean, this is Jamie. So we've, um, uh, you know, we've done migrations and we have experience migrating from T7000. Um, actually, we had one with, with C15 as, as well as other platforms. So there's, there's always two key parts in the migration. There's pulling the data out of the old platform and then populating it in the, in the new platform. Um, um, well mentioned, we have a, a kind of a defined SIP feature set targeted towards the uh, broadband market. So we, we don't necessarily um, um, uh, say this platform supports every single feature transparently as you may have on all the different ones. So that's one of the things that we'll want to go through um, with you in a little more detail on, on how we map some of the existing um, features to kind of the new broadband world. But in terms of basic features your customers would expect, I think you'll find pretty much 100% of them are there. And I think Richard covered a lot of that. Um, and let's see, if migrating to voice sync and the goal is to move to IP trunking, does Ribbon provide tandem trunking services or do we still go to a different provider for that? Jamie, so I think I'll ask take, for your help yeah. on that one. Sure. I was going to so, ask for your uh, help on that. One. Okay. Yeah. So Ribbon is not a service provider, and we do not provide um, tandem trunking services. There are several players out there in the uh, industry that do offer kind of a an all IP tandem service that can be utilized for either your C15 or the VoiceSync application. Uh, a matter of fact, we have a customer and service right now that is using a third-party IP interconnect provider to provide connectivity to the local AT&T tandem so that they didn't have to invest in a uh, TDM trunk gateway. Um, and, and we are perfectly fine um, doing that. If you don't have an IP interconnect provider and you still have to use TDM connections, then we have the, a trunk gateway that could be part of this solution to do that conversion as well. Thanks, Jamie. And last question we have is, can I choose my own SIP trunk provider or is this open? This is open. Yeah, so you can take care of it. It's open. Yep. You can use whoever awesome. you want. Awesome. Well, um, that's really all the questions we've had uh, today. I uh, appreciate everybody's interaction and, and uh, participation with the, with the questions. Any parting thoughts, Jamie or Elizabeth or Roddy, yeah. Greg, George, Richard? I, I'd like to circle back just one more time on yes. the, the capacity question. Um, as Richard mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar, Voice Sync is kind of a pre-packaged integration of a couple of our key products. And the objective of that packaging is to streamline the installation and management of, of the solution. Um, if you're a customer that needs more than the 50,000 lines that Richard had, had indicated, those products can be deployed as discrete elements. And we have many customers doing that today. And in that environment, the platform um, today supports over mm -hmm. two users and we have customers that have that many on them um, so really in terms of this market there's no upper bound it's just a matter of do we do the pre-packaged voice sync solution or do we provide the standalone elements and um, myself Elizabeth or you know members of our team would be happy to talk through that with you perfect thanks Jamie well, uh, thank everyone for attending today. I appreciate all the presenters being on as well. Uh, later this afternoon, you'll be getting an email uh, with a link to the replay of everything you've heard here today, as well as a, a link to the slide. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, as always, you can always reply to that email if you have questions that come up later. Uh, of course, on ribboncommunications.com, you can uh, find you know tons of places to reach out to us and get a hold of, of any of the people you spoke with here today. Um, so we appreciate your attendance today and we look forward to seeing you all in the next one. 
and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week and a great holiday season. Thanks so much. Thank you all.